What's up? So I'm back, guys. Today I'm going to talk, um, I'm actually going to show you how I make these HTPE frames. Um, it's a super, super simple. There's a lot of little nuance to it that you really only get once you've been doing it for a little while. So I'm going to go through um, all the things. I hope I'll go through all of the things that I have figured out along the way, things that work and things that don't. And how to some get arounds or some workarounds that um, I've come up with. So let's just go ahead and get started. So one of the most important things that you're going to need in order to make these is a template, and the template should be really, really well done. What happens is you're going to use a flush trim bit, looks like this, on your router, and it's going to trim everything exactly flush with where this bearing on top is set up. And so if you, your, your bearing is going to roll along this like that, and it's going to cut away everything that's underneath it. And so when you are using this, if your template has any little bumps or divots along the sides, it's going to show up on the HDPE. So when you make your template, you want your template to be as perfect as possible, okay? If you have friends in low places like I do, you can uh, have somebody make one on a CNC uh, and out of plywood or whatever other materials. I, I like plywood probably the most. Uh, this is just half-inch plywood. And I've actually rounded this over, so this would be a usable frame if I wanted to just you know cut some band grooves or something into this. But... Uh, this is not going to be a usable frame. This is my template. So let me show you guys what I do with the template. All right. So first things first, you're going to take your template and you're going to take your piece of HDPE. Now you can use really anything. It doesn't have to be HDPE as long as it will cut on a router, as long as you can cut it on a router with a saw. The HDPE is just the medium that I'm using. And this is a sheet of black half inch HDPE. But you can use anything. You can use plywood. You can use uh, polycarbonate. Although polycarbonate's really scary on the router, you can you can take that from me from personal experience. You can use regular wood. Um, although I wouldn't use just any board. If you have a natural fork that you've thinned, uh, maybe through a planer or something, you can uh, you know use a regular piece of wood. Micarta works great. Um, whatever you're going to use, just make sure that you have a flush trim bit with enough cutting surface to cut the full depth of your piece. So this flush trim bit is one inch, has a one inch cutting surface. So all the blade length from there to there is one inch. And this is only half inch HDPE, which is perfect. And then what you're gonna do, what I like to do, is put blue tape on the whole face of the product, on the whole face of the board. So that way you can draw on the tape. And uh, you know, you just trace around the template. So you put the template up there like that. You trace all the way around it. And now you have, you know, the outline around it. It's super easy. Uh, you're also gonna end up putting tape on it one way or the other. So you may as well just put it on there in the beginning. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you what uh, what comes next in this step, basically you're just going to cut the sh cut around the, the lines that you made. <laughs> okay, so we cut it out. The most important thing when you cut this out is to try to get pretty close to the line without actually going over the line. Um, the router is really powerful. It's going to remove a ton of material really easily. Uh, this HDPE is super, super soft. But you have to cut it out like this. Leave yourself a little space just for error. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the tape side and we're going to put tape on the template and then we're going to super glue them together. I'll show you what that looks like. So <clears throat> when you have your template and you have your piece cut out, what you're going to want to do is take your template and make sure that one side of the template's super, super smooth. It really helps. There's a couple of little pieces of uh, tape on this, so I'm not going to use that, but I'm going to use the smooth side. 
Then you're just going to put some tape on the face like that. Ooh, that looks cool because you can see the silhouette. And then we're going to work that in and make sure that it's really good and really well stuck to it. And then I like to use a round, um, a, uh, these are actually a chainsaw file, but I like to use a chainsaw file. And then what I do is I just file at the edge of it like this so that it cuts the edge of the paper like that. And that makes it really, really easy for you to tear it away with a nice clean edge. Work it all the way around. Just go real lightly too, because um, over the course of time, obviously this is going to file away some of your uh, some of the template. Okay. okay, now we got a nice, really nice, even um, you know tape all the way along your template, the face of your template. Then you're going to take some super glue and you're going to put a few dabs, a few little drops. See, just a few drops. And then we're going to glue it face down to the template like that. Press it down a little bit. Then we're going to let that sit there for a minute. What I like to do is I actually have this Folgers can <clears throat> filled with pieces of uh, descenders that I've made. We're just going to put this down on the table like that and put that on top of it. Okay, now we have to put our flush trim bit into the router. Good to go. The glue's dry now, but one thing that you notice here is that my piece doesn't line up exactly within the lines. My, my template doesn't line up exactly in the lines that I drew. It's not that big of a deal because as long as there's a little bit of space all the way around the template, which you can see that there is, it's still going to cut fine. So what we want to do is make sure that the height of the flush trim bit is going to reach the height that we need so the bearing at the top should be riding along the very center of the template so let's fix that here okay let me see if i can get you guys a little bit like that you see the flush trim bit like the um the bearing on the top is going to ride right along the center. This is one of the reasons that I like to use plywood as a template because of all the lines. You can easily see that there's room to cut now. And you can see where the center of the template is as well. Let's go ahead and cut out the, the initial shape. Okay, so what, what ended up happening here, as you can see, where the bearing was riding along the edge, there was a piece of tape. And right there is very, very clearly a bump in the plastic. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and take that piece of tape off there. I'll try to do this with one hand. Okay, there's the tape. Now we'll just pass it around again and make sure that it cuts that. Um, and again, even on the second couple of passes, go pretty slow. But you can see the rest of it is really nice looking. If you run your finger along it, you'll be able to feel any bumps. And obviously the part, the part that you want to pay the most attention to is near the forks. Now here we, did the, we got the same thing, so I can feel it kind of bumpy in there. So 
we're just going to peel some of the tape back and we're going to cut it one more time. All right, so now we got it really nice and very smooth. And again, pay particular attention to the tips because your latex is going to be wrapped around the tips and you want those to be really, really nice. But now we're going to peel apart the layers. Old knife. When you pry the knife in there, pry it toward the template like that so that if you make a mark in it with the blade, you actually mark the template. Just gonna peel all the tape off. Put the template away, and now we have what is basically a blank. So it's perfectly cut along the edges of the template. And now we just have to round over the edges, and we're gonna change the bit to a round over bit for that. I think this is a 3 8 round over bit. I think I like to use that for the half inch. Okay, so this is another thing that I learned over time. Start with it low and work your way up. You can always adjust the height of the router bit upward, but if you cut it too deep on the first pass, it's you're going to ruin it. Okay? And what you want is for the bearing to run just a little bit higher than down the middle. So you want the bottom edge of the bearing to run along the center of the frame. Um, you can't really see any lines on these that go um, this way. All the cut lines are going up and down right now. But I can adjust the depth just slightly. And actually, yeah, depth is probably too, deep, too high right now. Okay, we'll go with that. All right, Let's see if I can put you in pretty close line, like about there. Well, that still might be Nah, that'll be okay. Okay, let's go ahead and cut the edge. Okay, so you can see the round over. And you can still see that there's, down the center, there's a flat line. If you go too low... That will be much more pronounced, so you won't get very much in the way of a roundover. But if you go too high, you'll run a ridge along that line, and it'll be very sharp and painful to shoot. So start low and work your way upward a little bit if you have to. Take off less than you think is necessary in the beginning, and then, and then take off more if you need to. But this is basically done now. This is a frame. This is ready to go. But um, this HDPE material is very slick. So um, it actually doesn't... It's one of the few things that I've actually found that doesn't work that well unless you put band grooves in it. So we're going to go ahead and put band grooves in it. Okay, now we're also going to use the router to do this. But we're going to set up the fence. And I'm going to use this. This is a quarter inch wide and it's just round over the top. I don't know what it's called. But this bit works perfectly for band grooves. It is the perfect band groove router bit. So we're going to go ahead and swap this out. So as you can see, my fence has holes and slots and all kinds of stuff in it. But what I've done, very easy workaround is I've just taken this piece of plywood, it's half inch plywood, and I've cut it to fit right there. And then what we're gonna do is just clamp it with these spring clamps so that it makes a nice flat edge for us to, uh, for us to use. So on the router table, you can see where it measures, and this is zero, which lines up exactly to the center there. And I like to have it a quarter of an inch height. And there's one on both sides, so you can set them both to the same depth. And actually, this one looks a little bit higher. Okay, I adjusted the fence. 
And now we have to set the depth of this bit. Now, this isn't one I get right 100% of the time. But again, it's better to start low and work your way up. So you can always make it deeper, but you can't put the material back once you've cut it. And I did make this mistake once where I did not adjust that thing. Took a huge groove out of the uh, slingshot. It was still usable, but it just looked so bad. So what we're going to do, you're going to drop it down virtually nothing. Then we're going to give it a pass. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the frame and press it against the fence and just slide it across until it hits both forks. And then you flip it and do the same thing. Now, I like to do it twice on each pass just so that it cleans up any weird edges or whatever. But let's see if I can get the light on that. Okay. So you can see that, and then you can see the depth. And I want it a little bit deeper than that. So let's go ahead and raise the router, and we'll cut it again. All right, so now we can see the depth again, and that's a much nicer depth. So we're gonna keep it at that depth, and we're just gonna do the other side. All right, so now you can see what it looks like after the band grooves are cut. Now it's really, really done, except I like to put lanyard holes in there. Again, the, HD, the HDPE material is very slick, and it's slick in your hand, too. So I always, always, always put lanyard holes in the frames. If you have one without a lanyard hole, which they do exist, it's very, very rare for me to not put lanyard holes in there. It's usually upon request, only upon request. But I'm going to go ahead and drill a lanyard hole with my drill press, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. There's a drill press. We're going to put it into one of the corners. If you want to, you could center it and it would look awesome, but I'm terrible at that and my templates don't have it and I don't really care that much. So I put I offset it so that you can't really screw it screw it up that well. Boom. Lanyard hole. Now one thing you want to be very careful about with HDPE is you need to press it down. Um when I'm making a lot of them, sometimes I'll use a little bit of a clamp in order to hold it to the table because when you start to drill it, it'll just slide right up the drill bit and you might cut a really weird shaped hole in that case. <laughs> okay, so we got our frame, but you can see along the edges, it's still pretty rough and it's sharp. And when you're doing a wrap and tuck, that's gonna cut into your, um, that's going to cut into your wrap and tuck, and you don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we're basically just going to take a utility knife, which I have <laughs> right here. So this is just a little utility knife, real, real cheap. What we're going to do is we're just going to cut the edge very, very carefully. Like this. So that it rounds the edge over. And we're going to do that on all of the edges. Okay, now it's done on all the fork edges. And I also like to cut the edge of the lanyard hole so that the lanyard doesn't get worn down that quickly. And for that you just go around the hole like this. Man, you can't even really see that. Real nice and easy. I'm not going to cut that much off. You want a nice sharp knife so that the knife can do the work. You don't want to have to force it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Not much taken off there. The last step, we're going to put the shrink wrap tubing on there. So this is... 
fishing pole shrink wrap tubing. It's for fishing poles. It's a very nice grip. <clears throat> and we're going to uh, cut a chunk that we're going to need for the handle. So what I like to do is I like the little um, sideways cut or the you know uh, diagonal cut. I think it looks nice. So what we're going to do is have put it up like that. And then get about the size that we need. So we're going to cut it somewhere like right like that. Cut straight across. Perfect. And then you're going to put this on. Now, get, get one that's too small. Get the smaller one that you think you're going to need. Because what you can do very easily is you can take, I just have this pen tube you can work it around and kind of work it over and stretch it just a little bit. You just want to be careful not to tear it. And then once it's on there, we're going to take, <laughs> we're going to take our heat gun, which is here, and turn the heat gun on low and just hold this over the top of it. There's the heat gun. We're going to turn the heat gun on. Couple important notes. You don't need a heat gun. You could actually just turn your stove on, like your oven or your stove top on. And the heat radiating up, radiating up from the stovetop is plenty to shrink wrap this stuff. Um, I would turn it on low still. Another thing, make sure that you're constantly moving it. Okay, You can move it slow and make sure that you're getting it. But you don't want it to burn. You don't want it to melt. And the HDPE, once it gets to a certain temperature, will start to melt. And um, the shrink wrap is going to shrink long before uh, the HDPE will start to melt. But... You don't want to hold it there and let it sit there for too long because it will start to melt. Once it's to the shape of the frame, once the shrink wrap is to the shape of the frame, take it off the heat. Because when it cools, I think, at least this is just from what I gathered, I don't know if this is actually true, uh, but I think it shrinks down just a little bit more. I think it stays kind of loose for a minute, and then once the handle starts to cool down, the shrink tubing will solidify a little bit. It'll sort of, I don't want to say harden, but it'll kind of harden and take that shape basically permanently. But that's it, guys. This is the whole thing. Now your frame is done. There, the options are just endless on these. And it's so easy to make. It's so cheap. And uh, they come out really, really nice. I mean, as long as that template Template is the key. That template's got to be basically perfect. But if your template is very nice and very well done, that's going to be the most amount of time you have to spend on anything. And, uh, I mean, people like the HDP as far as I can tell. A lot of people are using it because it's a very cheap material. It's very heavy duty. Like, you're not going to break this. Um, it's easy to work with. Uh, it comes in a ton of colors, a few different thicknesses. Uh, I mean, they float, so that's cool. I mean, it really is one of the best materials you can make with make make a slingshot out of. But if you end up making your own, you can make a ton of these things in a very short period of time. But they're all going to come out however well you made your template. So if your template is crap, these things will look like crap. If your template is nice, these things will look nice. And if your template's perfect, these things will look essentially perfect. Anyway, so now that you've watched me make this one, I'm going to do a giveaway on this one. I'm going to give this away. And all you have to do is comment on this video, Kodiak, the word Kodiak, K-O-D-I-A-K. And uh, I'm going to pick a winner to win this frame as it is. Uh, it's just black on black on black. It's real, real simple and basic, but I'm going to do the giveaway 
for this specific frame that you guys watched me make. So I think that would be fun. But, uh, man, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm glad I got to make this video finally. I'm glad I got to make a video finally. Thanksgiving was wild. Uh, it took a few days of my time. I've had to work a crazy amount of hours um, at my other job. And uh, I also, for the last, like, maybe four or five days, I've been a little under the weather. I just had a head cold, and you guys can probably hear I'm a little bit stuffed up right now still. So I'm feeling a lot better, though. So I uh, will be making more frames and shooting more, and we'll... we'll Hopefully get to make more videos or find more excuses not to. So <laughs> thanks for watching.